Hello, Salesforce Ohana, Walters954 here. And in this video, we are finally getting our hands on Einstein for Salesforce developers. So if you haven't really heard of what this tool is, it is basically like Copilot or other GPT AI tools where you can type out in normal sentences what we actually want to be generated inside of code. So long are the days of memorizing specific types of code and algorithms and things like that. Now with the power of AI, we're able to generate just with normal words, all of the different code that we want to see. Well, this is still a first impressions. I have been using GitHub Copilot for a while, but since this is just released, I'm gonna show you all how to install it, how to enable it and install it technically. There's two steps there. And then we're gonna ask it a few very simple prompts. Let's jump into it. So the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is we need to be inside of VS Code with a Salesforce project set up already. Then you can jump into your org by either hitting this open org button or doing control shift P open default org. You need to be all connected already. I've got my org open over here. So let's go into Einstein. And then all the way at the bottom here, we see Einstein for developers. You need to have this enabled for the extension to work. Now, remember, this is a beta. We're accepting the terms and conditions. Make sure to read over all of this. And it is still in progress in terms of what it actually can do. So I'm sure if you're watching this like a year down the line, this is going to be completely or even even three months, six months later, this is going to be completely different or the powers behind it may be completely different than what we are seeing. But this is just our first taste as of right now. Once you have enabled that for the org, jump back into your VS code, and then you want to head over to extensions and type in Einstein for developers. We can see the extension over here. I'm gonna press install, and maybe you've already installed it and done a few things, uh, like tried to test it out and you weren't seeing anything. So this is how you know that it's installed correctly. We have this little Einstein symbol back here, and this basically toggles it on or off. It enables it, so maybe you don't want it to to be predicting something in a specific class. So I've got this installed here, and now I've got my little, there, there's a few different ways that we can access it. So since I'm kind of zoomed in, you, the Einstein sidebar over here, we can click on it. Some of you may just have this little symbol for the Einstein sidebar, but everything is looking good. If you're getting any errors here, try to restart your VS code and make sure that you have enabled the extension or enabled it inside of your org, like I mentioned before. That way you'll avoid uh, it saying, you know, it, it cannot be accessed or something like that. So really cool. We are at kind of like the first stages of it. We see that we have this sidebar over here and we can say, uh, I don't know, write a query to get all contacts with the last name of Smith. And we can just press ask. And what this is going to do, it's going to go out and generate this specific code. And we can see this is actually pretty good, right? That here's the message that it's actually creating. We can uh, thumbs up if we think that this was good and take this and actually run this. So I'm going to copy that. And let's see if it actually worked by open up the, opening up the Sockle Query Builder, paste this in. And now I'm going to run, here's the query that they just created. I'm going to run it and well, the query worked successfully. There's probably no records with the name of John in here. So this is one way of doing it. Um, we can also say we can turn this into a method, write a method to get all contacts with the last name of uh, Smith. So what I'm expecting is actually code to be generated, right? It's an actual method for us to use. And this is pretty good, right? We can, we can kind of see some of it here. So what I'm going to do now is uh, let's do control shift P and create an apex class for us. Testing Einstein for developers. And what we can do here, even though like, so this is probably one thing I don't like about this. We can copy this code and paste it in, but our class names are wrong and all of that stuff. So really it doesn't work like GitHub Copilot where um, we're able to kind of just drop things in 
But if we take the middle pieces of it, like this works out pretty well, at least for a starting point. Um, and we can save this, deploy this to our code, and, or deploy this to our org, and this looks pretty solid, like the deployment worked out successfully, all of this code compiled. So that's at least a good sign that our code even compiled. So we can go and run this and you know test it out inside of our org. So there is another way for using this kind of like Einstein and, and Einstein for developers. Once we are in an Apex class, you need to be in an Apex class. You can do Control Shift P and type in, uh, I like to type in generate, but there's gonna be this new Einstein generate code. And you very simply enter in the query that you're gonna ask or the question that you're gonna ask. The query is a very, I guess, technical term. So what we're gonna say here is, write a method to calculate, or let's do randomly generate number between one and 100, right? Kind of a simple task. Uh, we press enter and we see it querying and uh, we're getting some code back in here and we can see it added into where my cursor last was. So let's see, we've got this random number generation method in here. It's not exactly what we were looking for because we were trying to do uh, between one and 100. We, we gave that specific amount, but it did give us a max amount for us to try. Now we can we have a few options here. We can hit accept, which means we wanna take these changes. We can try again and it'll bring up our query once more. Let me actually move this to the correct place and then hit, uh, let's, let's rerun and it may give us the same exact answer uh, that we had in here. So it's not really, Whereas in ChatGPT, you could potentially ask it the same exact thing and it'll give you a different answer. This is, looks like it's giving us the same answer. But what's really nice is, you know, if this is the code or at least a baseline that you wanna start with, you can accept it and it will then uh, be put inside of here for you, which is really nice. Now we don't have any triggers, so let's go ahead and create one. I'm gonna do Control Shift P. Uh, type in triggers, I'm just gonna say contact trigger. And I'm gonna actually move all of this out, right? And then you do control shift P and generate code again. And I'm gonna say create a contact trigger that automatically sets the address to Apple's headquarters. All right, I'm gonna put that in, it's processing. Let's see what it actually generates. And this doesn't look too bad, right? We've got, I'm gonna actually accept this, right? We've got our contact trigger for the name, pretty solid name is what I picked. Uh, inserted or updated, so we're checking our context variables, looping over our contacts, so it is bulkified, and we're using the new ones. And then it's it's grabbing information that is not like I'll say potentially on the internet, something I didn't know at the top of my head, right? It's grabbing this address, and I think this is actually Apple's uh, address in there. One thing that I don't like though is it's checking this ID, like what? Where did this ID come from? Why are you checking this this value in here? So I think you know this will probably deploy but this will never work and there's no reason this is this is just some random information that it's coming up with not really what i was looking for but the overall structure at least these guts are generally the same now i don't like there are single letter variables and there are a few different things about my coding style that i would change about this and hopefully this is able to learn from uh, how I like to write my code. So the last thing I'm gonna check is something specific to my org. I'm gonna jump back over into this panel and I'm gonna say, uh, write a method to insert a house, which is a custom object that I have only in this side of this, inside of this org, to insert a house when an opportunity is closed one. Let's ask this and let's see if it's able to understand we have a house custom object and um, fill out some of that data. And it looks pretty good, but let's say, see if we can do some compound stuff in here. Fill out more house fields. 
And one thing right off the bat that we are seeing, right, this is this is one, it's normal language, so I'm expecting it to fill out more of the values that exist. Um, but before it was actually showing some, uh, it was showing that it was related to the opportunity, which I'm fairly certain the house object that we have in here does not have an opportunity field. So it's just kind of making up stuff as it goes along. We can see we've got state zip, address and price and we've got state zip address do we have city let's match that up we do have city so that's good um and we're, we're doing some updates in here something looks a little weird though selecting house like this field doesn't exist so yeah it is making up a few different things as it goes along for the house relationships and things like that so just be a little bit weary uh, when you're using this it is still in beta so this tool is really cool but there are some quirks like it i guess hallucinating is what it's called in the ai field right it's just making up data and attributes that don't actually exist and i think that's okay for right now with this being in beta but as they move forward this is really going to need to get polished up if you compare this to something like github copilot github copilot is a lot more powerful and you can the, the really helpful piece is like the inline editing and inline creation of certain things github copilot runs into a lot of issues where it's mixing up other languages with apex development so it's not as clean where i really see einstein for salesforce developers coming Coming into play is having org specific information so like knowing your org structure and even other classes inside of your data and then bring a, being able to bring them down and generating code that is best practice specifically for Salesforce overall I'm excited for these types of GPT and AI code generation tools even though this is a beta there's still some quirks with it i think that we're just at the beginning and it has a lot of room to grow and be something really great if this video was interesting to you check out how chat gpt answers salesforce development questions as always i'm walters 954 thanks so much for watching and i believe in you